Hello again, welcome everyone, and uh, this time we're going to learn about OCaml exceptions. Exceptions, as you know, are errors. Uh, we can, on OCaml, as in, in, in several other languages like Java, for example, we can, you know, declare our own uh, sort of exceptions. And the way we do that in OCaml is just we, we say exception, and then we give it a name. The name always must begin with a capital letter. And then we can, for example, give it even parameters if we want or arguments so exception for example we give it a name and then we give it one or more parameters um, the way we do it is that after we act declare our own exception or maybe use one of the existing ones in OCaml whenever we define or declare a function that raises an exception the way we do it is to signal that one of the exceptions has occurred we use raise and then we give it the exception name with its arguments if needed and then the way we use it inside, when we, whenever we call that functions that raises an exception, is try with, similar to the try catch in Java, but this time is try with. So try expression, this is our logic here, with what do we want to do if that exception is raised, if that error actually occurs. Now, if no exception is raised, if our function raises an exception and we don't handle it, then the result, I'm sorry, no, in, 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 the, in the try with, if no exception is raised, then the try, sorry, the result of the try is the result of the expression. Yes, so if the no exception happens when, when we do try with, then this will be executed. Otherwise, if the exception is raised, then the first rule in match that matches the exception will be executed. And we ca can actually catch multiple exceptions or deal or handle mul or do, do multiple exception handling at the same time, i.e. we can do with uh, match one, exception one, exception two, exception three. We'll see how that works in a minute. Now, if we raise an exception and fail to handle it, so if the function raises an exception and we don't actually do a try with, then OCaml will give us an uncaught exception error. Um, now, enough talking. Let's go to our code. I have some simple code here, and if you if you see here, I'm def I'm declaring my own exception. I called it error, and I have a simple function here that actually concatenates two strings. So string str underscore concat and then s1, s2 are my arguments and if you remember we learned how we can specify the types of parameters explicitly by using colon and then type, colon type and then this is the return value of, this, of the function again we declare explicitly the return type of the function which is here uh, which is string here. So what I do here is I say if S1 or S2 are empty, they equal empty string, then we raise this exception error. Otherwise, we just re re return the concatenation of the two strings using the hat operator. And then in my fun here, what I do is I now catch or handle the exception, handle the exception by saying try string concat and then get the two arguments from the command line. So apart from the command name, as we learned in the last videos, apart from the command name, we need to pass two arguments and if they are empty, if one of, the, of them is empty then we raise an error. So this s here will have the value of the string concatenation function, the return value from the function. If there is an error then it will have this value of error over here and then what I do is I actually print out the string. Um, so what I, can, what I can do is I can go to my code and then compile the file, again it's called file.ml and then I want the executable to be called file, that's the minus O option. Compile it. It's giving me syntax error in line 15, let's fly to line 15. Where's line 15? That's 13. Yes, I need to say in. So s equals try either this, the result of this, or this in the following. So let me save that. Compile again, it's happy now, so I can pass it two parameters for example I can say hello world and what it will do is it will actually concatenate the two uh, words argv1 argv2 as we learned before and then I print them out, save them in s and then print out s and give it as a new line so it print out hello world, if I give it only one then you notice here it's complaining of invalid argument uh, index out of bound exception. If we go to our modules, we are using the uh, sys 
module system interface and then the argv string array and it's actually catching um, what's it called? yeah invalid argument yeah, this is actually by the way yes excellent this is actually a good time to show you how we can handle or how we can catch multiple exceptions at the same time so what I can do here is with error uh, error or I can say or also this exception notice here that this actually uh, receives type str string index of out of bound and I can return a string so it's compatible with the return value of this and this to be stored in S and I can say for example uh, index out of bounds and then it will print out index out of bound without ending the program uh, suddenly so let me just compile this at the moment so this is actually learning more than one thing at the same time it's printing out index out of bounds yes rather than uh, having the fatal error and end of the program the program ends normally but we know that we have an error at the moment so we actually learned more than one thing at the same time we learned how to declare our own exception and then how we can handle it and, and try with also how we can handle multiple exceptions at the same time so if the first one is not caught then it's actually the second one another thing maybe we can do is we can declare an error of or exception and give it a value as we saw in the slides where are the slides we said here that we can give it some type yes uh, so back there we just raise failure raise failure and then we need to give it a string so we say failure and then we need to give it a string yes I'm sorry I need to give it a string otherwise we will be having errors compile it is actually complaining yes expect one argument the argument should be actually here failure error that's how we declare our own um, oh again constructor failure expect one argument but is applied here to zero arguments let's have a look another look failure of string raise failure Oh, still complaining that's quite interesting hmm Inter oh, oh I think I know why this is happening well what I need to do here is I need to because raise receives one variable so I need this is thinking that raise receives these two parameters whereas this should receive one so I'll put them in parentheses save that and now we should be fine I think yes we are happy it is a happy OCaml program as you can see a little OCaml project and now we can execute our program normally hello world and it should do that so hopefully this is making sense we learn more than one thing at the same time we can declare our own exceptions without a parameter or with parameters if the exception uh, or if you want to pass it more than one parameter then we just separate them by star so for example string and int and then here I can say uh, error for example and maybe give it a code 3 or something and then here again I need to give it a tuple of an string and an int let's say for example again save um, and compile just to show you how this works expects two arguments where is that in line 13 we were having the same issue with line 13 oh yeah not there I'm sorry not there here I need to pass it two parameters there and there a string and an int and now we should be fine as you can see it's quite is working very nicely so we learned more than more more than one thing at the same time declare our own exception even it has if it has one or more parameters we separate them by star and then pass them as a tuple or maybe catch uh, existing exceptions and catch or deal with multiple exceptions and at the same time beautiful isn't it this is how powerful OCaml is this is how actually short the code short the code can be as you can see thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time